this is like if this if this freaking mixer goes after I bought this nice mic, I'm gonna be ticked. Do your kids like come in and play with your mixer board? I every know, week? right? Like, I don't think so. Twitch is live. Like it- awesome. <laughs> cool. Tape markers. It's just in time to hear, hear mm. people hear to hear people hear it's have you complain about your, right. <clears throat> right. Yeah, my I had mine was last week apparently. <laughs> Thanks for that. Ah oh, man, I was like, I gotta find something, and then I found that I was like, ah, oh, that is like borderline offensive and so i like turned it down at that part and i was like yeah whatever um okay you know what that kind of thing just makes us seem like real people is what how i feel we, about as opposed to the robots you know how to be honest. you mean we're not podcasting robots what <laughs> That is a sufficient level for the level thing that I'm recording on. Okay, we're good. We are Uh, happy. Start a new track. And, uh, yeah, we're golden. Okay. Do you want to count us in when you're ready? Yeah, Mm -hmm. sure. Let's go in a three and a two and a one. Welcome to Nintendo Dads episode 12. On tonight's episode, the new 3DS might stream Wii U content? We debate downloading games versus purchasing the physical copy. Metroid Prime Trilogy hits the eShop. Get your $10 ready. Fan questions and much more on tonight's episode of Nintendo Dad. Now, Zachary, I've given you enough time. Could you at least, sir, cue the music? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Nintendo Dads Podcast, episode 12 for January 28th, 2015, 2015 even. Uh, my name is Zach Erickson, and joining me tonight is Justin Masson. How are you doing tonight, Justin? I am doing fantastic, sir. It is Wednesday, and I am here with my two favorite people on the internet talking all things Nintendo, so that makes me a happy man. Oh, that's sweet. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I am glad to be here as well. And joining us to round out the trio, as it were, uh, Jesse Waldeck. How you doing, Jesse? And as I've always said, I am in shape. Round is a shape. It <laughs> is a shape. And I am a square, and that is also a shape. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, let us go straight in tonight, guys. Uh, into you know it was kind of a crazy uh, quiet week honestly like yes there were some some other some like numbers that came out um, we kind of have come to a consensus that numbers are are kind of dry um, after we <laughs> went through them before yeah, I, I wouldn't mind going through them maybe on a quarterly basis but that's definitely not something I want to do monthly or even or or, or more recent than that yeah especially I, especially when it's stuff that uh, is not you know I'm gonna kill this music hang on. That's, I, I have a, a, the attention span of a goldfish, so anyway. Nice. Uh, I'd love it if we start if we start reading the financial reports in very, you know, slow Christopher Walken tones. <laughs> or, got or, sold or 4.78 copies. Maybe we, can hi- maybe we can hire Charles Martinet to read them for us. 5.7 million amiibos, wahoo! <laughs> <laughs> it's a me, keep a buying! <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I wonder if he gets any royalties for any of that. I, yeah, ma- I, I imagine he gets paid normal for any new recordings. Whether he gets royalties, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. All right, guys, let's let's jump into what we're playing. <laughs> <laughs> None of this nonsense. Let's get going. Let's talk about voice acting royalties. <laughs> All right, so who's Jesse? Why don't you start us off this week with what you've been playing? I think my what's you've been playing was going to sound a lot like yours from last week. Ah, I, oh, I was just right getting on a rant. It's not. It's not. Yeah, it's kind of a rant on poor game design in general. <laughs> wow, not to put too fine a point on it there. We're, <laughs> Digging kids, this is going to get good. <laughs> We're talking okay. about, and yeah, he, he he guessed it, Citizens of Earth. Um, I the I'm not that far in, maybe an hour and a, no, not even an hour and a half in. 
I'm still to the point where I'm trying to save the manager of the coffee shop. So actually, hang on real quick, Jesse. I'm not sure which of the two of us has got background noise. I'm going to pause the recording. Um, but one of the two of us has got some gnarly background noise. I do have a fan running. Let me mute. mute, mute I'm going to mute myself, and you tell me if it's me. Okay. Yep, totally you. All right, let me kill that fan. Sorry, dude. <laughs> yep, <laughs> totally you. Sir. I just, I just know that that is going to drive me bonkers. Did in you just the... farted me? Did I? No, that was totally you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, <laughs> totally not my brand. All right, all right, are we back? Does it sound better? Yeah, it does sound better. All, All right. right, we're back. I, I forget okay. that. I forget that fans on. Yeah, no, it's okay. Okay, so citizens okay. of Earth. Citizens of Earth. You're so, playing it on Wii U, right? I am playing it on the Wii U, and while the graphics look pretty, the whole thing seems like it was designed for the lowest common denominator system, probably mm -hmm. the Nintendo 3DS, because you know, as we discussed last week, it was released on PS4, Vita. Steam, Wii U, and 3DS all on the same day. Mm -hmm. and you, you had your issues with it, with it basically being no 3D. Mm -hmm. The two big issues I have with it are it's gamepad only. Wait, what? Yes. What? Okay, so that meaning... I, try, so no, I tried playing with my uh, Pro Controller. Oh, I see. Okay, sure. Nothing. It wouldn't go weird gamepad only and then very small zones that you, you know, where you have to zone into the next section into a, a to a, lo a loading screen often mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. the loading screen itself isn't that long the fact that you could see three of them in a 30 second period it you yeah. might as well have one long one and and the loading screen isn't fun to look at it, oh, it's just like it just shows your main objective and a loading bar. It, and it takes like three seconds for the the brightness to even come up to you, for you to see the whole thing. It's, it's like you get lag on the loading screen. And most of the time, <laughs> it finishes loading before the brightness comes up all the way. Yeah. And it's always the same static image. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like in general, they designed it to be. I bet you it's probably what they did is they probably. Uh, it seems like they they had like probably s like Steam would be like the sort of base, and then you would port it to everything else. Um, but yeah, I know I agree. And so, other than the weird like presentation stuff and the ridiculous load times, how far into the game are you? Like, is it are um, you enjoying it so far? I don't know. Uh, the The characters are funny, and I want to get to know them. It's mm -hmm. just, and I'm already coming across into some uh, uh, bat beep crazy stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but you know, the the mental preparedness I was in at the time, I wasn't ready for crazy. I was <laughs> so. Uh, I don't know, I'm only maybe an hour, hour and a half into the game. Okay. So, Have you found I'm I'm kind of at the point where and I don't want to like spoil it too much, but you you end up fighting like a coffee maker man. Um, I'm I'm kind of there. I, I believe they're called baristas. Uh, yeah. Barista. No, no, like a human coffee maker cyborg is kind of what it, I now, now I'm much more interested in this game. <laughs> I, I'm kind of in that area and Okay. Yeah, was, so it sounds, I'm just a little bit farther than you then. One of the mo the creatures names I fought was Cappuccini nerd. Cappuccini nerd, yeah. Cappuccini nerd. I'm yeah. like, okay, so you're, I'm yeah, like, I think you're. Because the, the way I've been attacking it is I, I, I have mom, brother, and the. Uh, the. The baker? No. The, the conspiracy the guy? The conspiracy guy. There I, have, you go. I have those three in my party. So I normally start a fight off with mom doing a uh, lore. A lower defense on all on all creatures, mm -hmm. and then the brother doesn't attack on all creatures, so I didn't really get a chance to narrow d to single target a monster until I used the conspiracy guy. I'm like, what is that thing called? And I finally found it, and I'm like, all right, Matthew, my son, I could look at this, and he sh and he reads it, thinks about it, and he goes, yeah, that looks about right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. <laughs> It's really it's a now have you run into the have you run into the um, now the interesting thing I found about this game is we, I've kind of played it a little bit more is is how how big of a part the collecting all the different citizens is 
which really encourages you to explore as much as possible um, because you may run into somebody that you then will run into them again apparently it seems like later in the game um, and so you almost want to run into them first but you may run into somebody it's like oh I can't do it right now come and find me later yeah I, my, uh, I must have uh, that's another thing is the quest system doesn't seem to be very intuitive it's hard to tell hard to find out what quests I have open I must have mm -hmm. talked to 30 different people and they all have a recruit button but none of them will let or, you don't will, know if you can actually recruit them or if it's well, just like oh, you'll run into them again sometime or all of them normally say I can't do this now until this happens yeah. like like the, the the first girl you you come into the reporter she literally says you have to go to this area and this area first before I can join. Right, you. and you can actually see like basically what what a, a what's the equivalent of like screenshots and like okay, go to this place and then find yeah. this place. And like the police woman yeah. sounds like you have to beat a few mini bosses first. Yeah. Where I, yeah. I, I I have one of them down. And yeah. So, so I have the I have the baker and the school mascot available to me in addition to the three I have in my party. Mm -hmm. And then with another issue that not kind of that's. Not, I'm not sure if it's an issue, but I generally have a problem p with games that have the job system. And mm -hmm. having this game force me to pick three out of potentially 40-some other characters... With no... yeah, That's no ultimately what this breaks down to is a job system. Yeah, and, and the I fact that I don't know if that's going to work well for me. <laughs> well, this, the thing I've run into is that is that there are forty potentially 40 different ones. I've probably unlocked... I think seven of, you know, I have like seven potential characters now um, to choose from. And there is zero system for like leveling up the guys that are not in your party. Unless so, you, well, you, I guess you can pay money into school. Which, oh, can you? Okay. Yeah. You have to, once you save the, once you find the teacher, mm -hmm. which is still silly. And you know, right. I, I guess I haven't been in the school then. Crap. See, that's what I mean, is that if you don't explore <laughs> literally everywhere, then you may miss out on one of these characters that that would make a huge difference to uh, to how you're controlling, the, you know, how you go through the course of the game. The, um, the, the problem I end up having with JavaScript uh, games, especially like uh, uh, Bravely Default, I had mm -hmm. that issue, is I pick a party, I like my party, I level up the party, and then I come up with one boss that this party is completely ineffective on it. Oh, you need to use this, this, and this in your party. Well, well they're still level one. Mm -hmm. So I've got to start pretty much start over, regrind to get to where I need to be to beat the boss. I'm like, no, I stopped there. Yeah. You know, I mean, little known fact is that my, my background's in like psychology and neuroscience and stuff like that. And there's this thing that happens, this sort of in psychology, this sort of thing that w with satisfaction of how you know how satisfied somebody is when they make a specific decision is really dependent upon how many different choices are available so if you have like for example 10 different uh, you know if you have a choice between you're going out to buy like a DVD player and you have three options um, and you pick one then you're probably pretty likely to be satisfied with your decision if there are 10 different ones and you buy the exact same DVD player that you would have bought with three choices you're likely to be less satisfied. And I feel like that's a similar sort of thing that we're seeing in this game where there are so many options. Um, but, it, I mean, it seems like some games, like Pokemon, for example, there are, like, tons and tons of choices. But, uh, but you're, those you're, choices have a logical sense to them, at least exactly. within their own universe. This game, is so far, is just bonkers nonsense. Yeah, it seems like there are so many different combinations that it's... It it seems like you you're always missing something in your team so far is what I've felt like is that you you can never really get that perfect balance. So yeah, I, I need to find a better healer because mom can heal and the other two just fine, but mom can't heal herself as I could tell. No, dude, cool. that's what you got to get the baker. The baker is right. a pretty easy quest too. I need I to figure so out how to. You know, I have the baker available. Uh, I just have to figure out how to swap them in. Then I think you just yeah on the 3ds you just drag them in, but. You know, it is. I mean, I, said that, I've, though, like, I've also collected items that they say this goes to mom, this goes to the baker, this goes to so and so, but I haven't figured out how to equip it yet. Oh, it's another weird thing where basically you go to their equipment page and it lists it lists all of the items that are that are available for that character, 
and you basically just have to select one of them to use. It's weird. Like, it's because an item is only available for that particular character. So a lot of the menu stuff in that game is just kind of weird. See, um, this kind of breaks down to they designed one menu and they tried to make it work to all the systems, mm-hmm. which is versus playing to the strengths of each individual system. Yeah. Like, they, totally. like, like it's not... Felt feels like the 3DS might have been their lowest common denominator that they designed for. I don't think with, they did though, because the, the graphics. Well, would have been better with the exception that. of the artwork, but yeah. at least the systems, the internal systems, the program to that you know that device's memory and graphical capabilities. I don't know. Well, and the thing is too with that, yeah, the thing is too is that actually the menu system is all within the bottom screen, and so it's all touch interface. And it, I actually find that it's not that bad. It's pretty good see, and intuitive on that on that bottom screen. And so. again, again, I, f- I didn't even look to see if I'm I'm seeing anything on the touch on the gamepad. I should next time I play it, I need to look to see if maybe the ga- they are giving me a bottom screen experience on the gamepad. And you're like, why are there no men- menus in this game? Which oh, would make they're all in the game. Which pad. then <laughs> would make complete sense of why I haven't found them yet. <laughs> but if yeah, they're not down there, then I don't know where they're at. So essentially, what you're both both of you have been saying over the last two episodes is that if you're looking for a mediocre, kind of crummy experience on either 3DS or Wii U, <laughs> Citizens of Earth, Ver- er, a Citizens of Earth is for you. Yeah. Well, and having said that, though, like as far as the world that 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 this game is in and the sort of characters that are in here, um, it's again, I at times it's really charming and fun. And, and I don't know about you, Jesse, but you can the. It's almost like the voiceover kind of takes away from that, where it's just like so over the top and kind of cheesy, campy that you're just like, oh, really? I so far I'm kind of liking the voiceover in general. Oh yeah, yeah. I I I, I kind of like that. You know, and then the the last thing that I I'll mention on it is it seems like there was a giant difficulty spike going from the the city area to the woods area. To, to the north because mm-hmm. the very first thing I attacked um, it, it, it killed the conspiracy guy um, brother was down to three hit points mom was down to one hit point and took me like four attempts to run away before I finally ran which still took yeah. me a while to figure out how to even run because that, was, that wasn't intuitive once you get the uh, the school mascot he has an ability that helps leveling up faster it, like he basically has an ability that doubles the amount of experience you get in a battle. Yeah, he can change the difficulty, and he changes the difficulty as well. But one of his action, like one of his actual abilities in in a battle, is to double the amount of experience your guys get. Hmm. So maybe I should look into using him. Yeah, so he's pretty good. He's part of my main main team right now too. So cool. Well, yeah, no, that's awesome. That's that's one of the main games that I was going to talk about this week as well. Uh, the other game I wanted to talk about is uh, another RPG uh, known as. Uh, Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, um, which I think we'd kind of talked about a little bit. Roger talked about it quite a bit ago, um, but again, I, it's you know just more of the same. <laughs> I, I I feel like every time I keep coming back, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm like ten hours into this game, and I am I have I think I just finished the fourth gym, which which is usually like the halfway marker, right? So uh, well, yeah, it's almost yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, it's a very, it's very interesting. Uh, a guy, uh, a friend of mine at work, actually, like, was like, "Dude, have you seen these awesome videos of uh, Puzzles and Dragons Z from Japan?" And there was like some less, let's plays, and he was showing them, and it really actually struck me how, like, because basically the overworld in that game is very sprite based. And uh, I really like the style of the sort of overworld. I think you can kind of see it in the trailer, but it's it's kind of got a similar 3D overworld that the Pokemon games have. Maybe a little bit less uh, three-dimensional, but uh, and then it's basically just got sprites instead. Uh, and I really like the animation of that there. But, um, but yeah, long story short for that, uh, still playing that. It's still the same. I, I am actually kind of liking some of the game gameplay mechanic tweaks that they have where insta- essentially... Um, inst- like as you go from city to city or whatever, there there seems to be a lot of um, times within that game where it's just like, oh, I'm going to go to this city now. Do you want to come with me? And then you say yes, and then she's suddenly you're transported there, um, which makes a lot of the sort of running from like back and forth within that game 
uh, a lot easier as well. But it also is kind of is jarring and kind of breaks up the whole world exploring thing that those Pokemon games are usually so good at too. So, um, but yeah, and finally, I also uh, I also played the Monster Hunter Four demo, and is pretty good actually. I I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it. It looks great. I apparently the re- the textures in that game, if you played on the new 3DS, they're even better. Um, like they're improved textures if you play on the new 3ds. So I'm in, I'm looking forward to to trying that demo out in a couple of weeks. And not that we're counting down that it's two and a half weeks away. Yeah, but so you know. Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> but uh, I did play that, and uh, my biggest complaint has been about those games was was the, how non approachable they are. Um, and one thing, like at the very beginning when you play that game, when you play the demo, um, it does. I mean, it's not great. It's basically what it's done is it's like put in very short sort of descriptions of each, what a sense, uh, you know, the, each weapon. They'll have the the uh, description of like, all right, well, if you're using this, then this is the basic strategy you should use. But there's no actual discussion. It's literally just like probably three or four or five uh, screens of text saying, this is the basic strategy. This is what how you work this weapon. Uh, this is basically how you should try and play this class. Um, and then he, then you get rapid fire. Like you get, you know, do X and X and do this, Y to do this, do this, do this, do this. Is like if it feels like if this was voice acted, it would sound like the legalese at the end of radio commercials. It's, oh yeah, totally. it just it, I'm like I am lost. I read this. I still don't know what's going on. I tried. I, I tried it and had. I was confused. Yeah, I played. I played a couple of the different classes, that, and they were all right. Um, you know, and I, they were all the specifically the ones that they recommend, though, that I think are probably the easiest classes to play. Um, and they were, you know, I, I I felt like they were like, oh, really? Okay, well, that's that's weird. That that's what you would expect me to do in this situation. Like with the with the giant sword, it's like basically what you want to do is use your attack to draw your sword and attack the enemy then quickly sheath your sword and roll and then draw your sword again and attack the enemy again even though you've got like all these big attacks that are available that it just barely finished telling you about and so i was like oh okay that's that's how you want me to play this huh, game all right that's yeah i tried right. this i tried the the short sword and shield figured that would be a safe bet and no mm-hmm. It still felt like I was driving a tank. Mm-hmm. Like, I, and I think that's kind of the appeal. Like, it, <laughs> it definitely has the feel of like an MMO, where where it's like, okay, you're gonna have to know exactly how long this particular ability takes and how long the animation is, and 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 that sort of thing. Where it's not, it's not. Even though it looks a lot like a really fast-paced action game, it it's a little bit more. It's a little bit more strategic than that. You even in just your your button presses. Because um, even if you're like going off, even if you're not attacking but going off at, a, at as a, at a sprint, mm-hmm. and you try to change direction, you're not changing direction. You're going to hit that tree. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like I can't control. I ended up I, I did the the Jackie or at least the whatever they call it the supposedly the easy one. Yeah, I think I got him down to like seventy five percent. Then he fled to a different zone. Mm-hmm. By the time I found him again, I, I kept on attacking him, and he was full health. I'm like, oh, I'm not doing anything. Yeah. Well, and the interesting Off thing button. is, is, yeah, the interesting one. One last thing that I have about this game um, is, it seems like th- the whole game is basically structured into these tiny little areas that are linked together on the map by these long trails and it's kind of it's kind of a weird way to have an overworld and the kind of world of your game is to have these really little closed off areas but um the, what i was finding was happening a lot to me was the uh, the monster would run away to another area then i would chase it there and then you end up fighting right near the edge of that particular zone and like the the monster hits you and it knocks you out of that zone and all of a sudden you're hitting the loading screen and you're like oh crap oh okay i'm guess i'm going back again and so you have this weird sort of limbo where you're trying to steer the monster away from the edge of that particular zone because you don't want it to knock you out of the zone and you have to you know suffer through loading screens to get to get it figured out that happened to me quite a few times and i was just like oh you've got to be kidding me so 
anyways, it, it does seem fun. Uh, I'm really interested to see the extent of the, uh, the Nintendo skins and stuff like that that they've talked about in that game. I'm interested in this, but I'm really... I'm, I'm looking at the different sort of new 3DS launch titles, and I'm I'm still torn on exactly which one I want to pick up, but we'll we'll see. I I mean the Ace Combat game I never played that game either, and there's lots of amiibo support in that, and there's Majora's Mask, and you know like I'm still torn on exactly which one I'm going to pick up. But anyway, so uh, Justin, you have been quiet, yes. sir. Yeah, well, you know, Monster Hunter is is just not my jam. Uh, I tried I tried the demo when they put it out on uh, the Wii U. It was a uh, Monster Hunter Three, and I I kind of like you had difficulty with it. I found it very I- unapproachable, mm-hmm. uh, and I was and I was challenged by it. So I gave it about the 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 time of about an hour of my day, and I was like, no, no, this is not. This is not in my wheelhouse of what I like, but mm. I understand it's huge, huge following. So I'm, I'm happy that that it sounds like you had a, had an all right time with it. I know it's huge over over, um, Japan over in the east in Japan, huge, especially right? yeah, massive. Uh, and I'm I'm excited to see what the rendering uh, for the th- new 3DS looks like, and especially that C uh, C stick control mm. uh, flipping around your camera angles. I'm happy to see what that looks like as well. So. Right on, man. Uh, what have I been playing? So, you know, I think sometimes as a parent, sometimes you don't get as much game time as you'd like, which is um, which is appropriate, right? You got kids, you got to do things to do. So I haven't had a lot of gaming this weekend or this week. What I have been doing is I've been playing a bit more of uh, Mario um, versus Donkey Kong March of the Minis. I- I'm kind of falling back in love with my old 3DS as I'm preparing for my new 3DS in a couple weeks from now. You mean just um, like regular regular DS, not a 3DS? Is that yeah, what you're... Yeah, you're absolutely right. Sorry, yeah, it's 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 a regular 3D. Uh, I'm gonna, le- I'll sorry, get you on that. Regular DS. <laughs> it is a DS Lite, uh, right. back from 2008 or 2009. So, yeah, it's I've just been really enjoying it. Uh, I think I mentioned. Well, I mentioned you guys. I've got a. Tra- I'm traveling in the next little bit down to Boston for a week, uh, and all I'm gonna I'm not gonna bring my iPad with me at all. I'm gonna 100 percent just bring my DS Lite and some games. So I'm gonna I'm gonna spend nice. some some time in that ecosystem. I've got about six games ready and packed and uh, and contained. So I'm excited to do that. But what I have been playing a little bit of, I got a little bit of chance to to dive in about an hour and a bit into Pushmo. And I mentioned this last week uh, that I picked it up on the eShop when it was on sale. I picked it up for about seven dollars and fifty cents. This is Pushmo. Some, this is Pushmo World, right? For the yeah, Pushmo Wii World for the Wii U. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so I picked picked that up, and it's it's a really now this is a, a an eShop game published by Nintendo that you can only purchase in the eShop, as I recall, at least for the Wii U. Um, about $10 right now. I'd always kind of been thinking about it, kind of on the fence about it. Um, but for that price of, of $7.50, I decided to, to jump in. And it's really quite a fun, cute little game. It's it's based on the objective is that there is a, uh, a, a little small child of this kind of, I would say, like small... How would you? Uh, how would you describe his name characters? is Mallow, I think. He's yeah. like a little marshmallow man. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, essentially, like these are very you know visually non-intrusive or non-threatening character designs. They, yeah, essentially, they look like little like sumos and a marshmallow yeah, that's stuck together. <laughs> um, Sumo. I forgot. I forgot the wedgie diaper deal. But yes, yeah. no, you're totally right. And and so there's this there's this character stuck at the very top of of this what starts off. Surface that you need to get to the top of to reach, and in here you have to pull or push levels and kind of components of these um, level uh, of the stage to be able to create stairs, steps, little jumps to reach this character that you're trying to get. And it's a really cute, easy, easy and approachable game. Control con- um, mechanics. The control is really simple. Um, and I think it's a really fun game that you could sit on a couch and play with a family or play by yourself or even play with just your kind of kids because there's a little bit of complex problem-solving skills associated with it, um, especially in the early levels where it's, okay, I need to pull this block, three, I need to pull the other block, two, I need to pull the other block, one, which gives me, basically creates a stair. Mm-hmm. So I think if, you know, I think if, you're, if you're looking for kind of a fun little indie, not indie game, but a little fun game to pick up on the eShop, uh, that you know you could kind of do couch, not necessarily couch co-op, but couch play with. You pass a pass a gamepad down. Um, I think this is a great game to pick up. Again, I think it'd be great for kind of a young family to play as well. And you know it's by Nintendo, so you know that the content is safe. Now, there's another part of it that I haven't got too far into that I, I'm excited to is actually the level creator, where people can actually create levels and share them. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that is a lot to, of fun for sure. Others to download and, and uh, try as well, which I think is kind of the, you know, even the crutch system, or at least probably the architect around or archetype around what we're going to probably see in Mario Maker. Same idea. We use this. We use this as a reference point a couple episodes ago about, um, you know, it's going to live or die with that idea of sharing content and sharing levels, and and maybe this is where that archetype um, starts at. But again, I'd recommend it. Push my world. Having a lot of fun with it. Absolutely, and and just I'd also point people towards because this game actually came out uh, the first in this first two games in the series came out on the 3DS, and mm. so uh, and I mean that level creator. There's a great I can't remember exactly. I know you can share levels online uh, with the 3DS, but it's also um, they use a lot of QR codes there, so you can share levels with QR codes. Um, and the sequel Crashmo basically mm. takes the idea of Pushmo, but instead the it's actually the the blocks are within a three dimensional space, and so instead of pushing and pulling within like a sort of you know essentially a backdrop like drawers, yeah. Um, instead, you're pulling the blocks, and there's actual gravity that will allow the dro- blocks to fall. Oh, uh, nice! And that sort of thing, and it's quite a bit more challenging. Uh, but both of those are also available on the eShop. So on the three DS, Crashmo. Yeah, Pushmo and Crashmo. So uh, uh, that uh, looks like the games will be downloading very quickly soon. Right on, man. All right, let's m- head on into the news. <laughs> kind of been a quiet news week hasn't it it has oh oops i didn't touch that okay yeah it has <laughs> it was it's been kind of quiet i mean there's been a lot of talk about amiibo that is coming within the next you know the next week or so um we figured we'd kind of stay a little bit low on the amiibo week it's just been a weird sort of uh a week for amiibo where yes some are coming but it, i think honestly this is just going to be how amiibo is is yep uh there's gonna be some Gate, the, some amiibos coming, sure, I guess. We, we don't know when they're going to be here. Uh, and different stores are getting them at different dates and all that kind of stuff. So we will definitely be probably talking next week if we pick up any amiibos this week. Technically, I think this Friday, at least up here in Canada, they're they're coming out and being released. So Yeah, we, we did see some pictures online of, of, of uh people who are lucky enough to already kind of grab some early ones of uh, some Amiibos I saw earlier this week of Toon Link and Bowser as well. So, yeah. But actually, even before we're, we're, we're jumping in that, I actually kind of speak on the Amiibo train a little touch here, Zach. Mm-hmm. I was just on Amazon actually kind of kind of browsing around looking for some potential ami- Amiibos, and I actually just found uh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker Amiibo set for the Wii U. What? Which is Captain Treasure Tracker bundled in, like the game bundled in with a a toad amiibo. Wait, what? On Amazon.ca, it says it's currently unavailable, and the box art looks like it's probably Hot dog, dude. Um, on the from the east. Looks like it's uh, I think Japanese potentially, but yeah, it's on it's on Amazon.ca right now, and I'll actually put that in our chat notes. That's and, uh, super cool. Yeah, I had no idea that even existed. Is that I either did here? I? I was just browsing, so that's like hot off the Amazon presses. Beep 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 beep. Okay, oh, awesome. awesome. So. Um, cool. I just put that on my wish list, and if it uh, actually appears, then does that mean it will notify me? Because uh, I don't I have don't that game. Know. I didn't. Yeah, I, like, and you have been missing out. And that you is the only Super out. Mario one that I was even interested in picking up. So yeah, that is the perfect combination. But again, the the cover art is all in Japanese, and so that yep. could be J- Japan only deal. Could be. Could be. But yeah, so Amiibo, it's still a thing. It's still kind of the rollout is botched still. <laughs> Frankly, but despite a botched rollout, they have been selling a lot of them. Yeah, we've got what 5.7 million worldwide was just announced yeah. today. So, yeah, right on. But we're not going to talk about that. We've talked enough about that. We can talk more about it later. Um, first on that, I really I saw this and I was like, ooh, this would make a really good discussion topic because we love to speculate. We love to uh, we love to get that sort of stuff going. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about a rumor uh, that some some hacker types have dug into the software i believe of the new 3ds and have found essentially that the i'll I'll just read it here it says hackers were able to find out about hardware of oh hardware of new nintendo 3ds and they confirmed what they suspected that that as a video decoder that it has a video decoder which supports h i'm guessing with h.264 video format which is used for wii u for streaming to the gamepad and in Nintendo 3DS is used for viewing videos in HTML. 
So basically, what we're what we're looking at is a is that 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 there is hardware in there to receive H.264 video um, on the new Nintendo 3DS. Uh, so my question to you guys: They're speculating that this means that we'll be able to stream Wii U games to the 3DS. Uh, what do you guys think so far? And if I personally think that that I mean, we've talked about it kind of over before the, beforehand that the resolution of the of the Wii U games is is a an issue. But what do you guys think going into that? Jesse, Jesse you want to take lead? Yeah, I actually did a little research to figure out what the resolution of those screens actually are and the resolution of the gamepad is pretty much a 40p mm -hmm. and the resolution on the 3ds screens is 240p so it's a right it's literally a quarter of the resolution mm -hmm. or half and there's no way they're going to scale that down that would look yeah. too crap right yeah so we're not going to see actual wii u games streaming to the nintendo to the 3ds anytime soon right that i mean that i think that that is something that people are like oh that'd be awesome but then pretty soon is like uh actually no that's not going to happen but what that did get me thinking about is the idea that um that there are a lot of i mean we saw this in the gamecube era where we saw that sort of um you know gamecube gba connectivity in between games and so for example the I think it was Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures, where you could hook up a you could hook up a Game Boy Advance and use it as your controller. And if you went into a house or something like that, you would actually look down at your Game Boy Advance, and you would be exploring a space on the GBA, and there would be something else on the TV as well. And so you it, that was I a mean, fun that, game. Yeah, it was really cool, right? Like that sort of GBA connectivity was really cool. And so I'm thinking. That and I mean, there's a couple different reasons why they do this. Is that a because the hardware divisions are connected now, anyways, right? It's all just one hardware division creating both the Wii U and the 3DS, um, and they're just doing it for the sake of simplicity. Like, let's just use this. Isn't H.264 is a pretty open standard as it is, right, Jesse? Like, it's I don't know much about it, but I uh, being a numbered uh, is if it's not a, a numbered. Uh, protocol it sounds pretty standard to me mm -hmm. yeah it's definitely like it's not a weird sort of uh and I, again if we have listeners out there that are that are more experts on this but this is just kind of me remembering from from what i've heard before but i i believe it's a fairly open standard it's something that's pretty simple uh and easy to use as far as that goes i'm not an expert by any means but but basically the idea of unifying their sort of video streaming all to one thing and allowing the 3ds to participate in that um, opens up a lot of options for potential, and I was even thinking maybe in that in a sort of situation with um, with games, not necessarily not necessarily the new Donkey Kong uh, Mario versus Donkey Kong Tipping Stars, but we are seeing games that that may be cross play, and so maybe there's even some sort of uh, you know functionality within that game that you can you can actually play with your 3DS as a sort of as maybe not a Wii U gamepad, but similar sort of functionality uh, speci specifically designed for that kind of a setup. So, I don't know. What do yeah. you think, Justin? How does that sound? Yeah, I mean, or originally when I saw the comment, I think I'm like everyone else who did the original, like, oh, sweet, now we can get Wii U content on the game, you know, the 3DS and all we won, and this is fantastic. Um, but then, like, Logic <laughs> took like, a big oh. step in there, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nintendo's not going to do that. That's far too logical or easy and what we want. So that's <laughs> not going to occur. Um, you know, I, I am curious if, if you know the, the individuals who did this. I mentioned they found the coding in the new 3DS. If any of this coding existed in the, in the quote unquote current 3DSs, because you have to remember the 3DS, whether it's the 3DS XL or whatever else, recently had this level of connectivity with Smash Brothers, right? Where you could use your 3DS as a controller. To you play. could use it as a controller, but, you, but it wasn't streaming any video. For isn't it? Okay. The, the, I think it would just show like a it would show like a picture of like essentially like the health bars, uh, okay. or like okay. the percentages on the 3ds or something. I think that's pretty much using like a TCP connection between the systems versus, mm, okay. versus like a Bluetooth controller, which would be yeah. more responsive. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think overall, I, I think I think it's probably Zach to your point of just the fact that the the hardware team is just so integrated with both both systems now that it's just using some of the same stuff. Um, I'm hopeful that maybe one day it just means a little bit more of that. I, I do like the idea of like this other screen experience when you're playing a game, but you've already got that experience kind of going on, right? Like, so am I supposed to look at my big screen television and play a game, look at my gamepad, then look over at my 3DS? Like, I don't know. If yeah, I'm it's, it seems screens. really clunky, right? But I, One thing I said made me think a little bit harder about it, and this gives me a weird idea. So I said the resolution of a 3DS is one quarter the size of the gamepad. Now, Nintendo has stated that the Wii U system can support two gamepads. It's just so far we haven't had any software that do it that does it. Now, if you if you take that second gamepad that doesn't yet exist, split that into force, if you, are, are they able to send a quarter of the screen to four different 3DSs and have like a Pac-Man versus game? So we're or like a split screen sort of deal. Yeah. So so the Wii U can still feed content to the 3DSs. <laughs> But at the native resolution, and since the resolution is a fourth of the Wii U's gamepad, they should be able to drive would be four. A lot easier, at, right? They should be able to drive all four at once. Just cut mm -hmm. cut the screen in quarters and feed each quadrant to a different machine. That actually, this, yeah. This has now just solved the best, the biggest problem of four-player multi-screen cheating. Yes. Right, Golden Eye. I remember. No, yeah, I know where you are because I can see you. I can see you on the screen. I will come find you. <coughs> this has now solved a problem from 1996. Thank you, Nintendo. Nice. Thank you. Okay, here's another idea. Since we're since we're in sort of like totally pie in the sky craziness, Popcorn everybody's ideas. everybody's thinking we're gonna stream Wii U games to the 3DS, but no. the reverse is also potentially true, right? Where the 3DS mm -hmm. could be streaming 3DS games to a Wii U and play it on the big screen. Right is I mean it potentially would be the same the same sort of scenario. Uh, obviously, I, 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 maybe it's possible. I'm not sure. With the power of the new processing of the new 3ds Excel. But but then but then you just you just turn into a problem where and I think from your your conversation last week, um, Zach, is that every game on the 3ds must have 3D. You have just cut off 3D if you transition it to a Wii U title. Well, not yeah, necessarily we, because you still have the two, the, like the, the Nintendo 2DS. Yeah, so, that's already a thing. So, but, but the issue you're going to have is you're going to expectation. Have, yeah, is you're going to have a 240p screen on a 1080p TV. <laughs> well, yeah. the top the top and, screen's a little bit more than that, but still, no, I see what you're saying. No, yeah, well, it, it's 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 a little wider, but it's still the same height. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. We'll see what happens for sure. Yeah. So I don't know. It's it's definitely. Yeah. yeah anytime I, I, think both, like I think both. I think both screens are two hundred and forty pixels. And then the top is a sixteen by nine. The bottom is four by three. Mm -hmm. Right on. Cool. So yeah. And I mean, at the very least, this is this is them unifying everything so that with the next system, it can be an entirely. You know, the more the more we've talked about it, and the more I've kind of seen other stuff with coming with Nintendo's next system. Um, the more I think maybe they would be crazy to completely merge both of them, but I think that they're going to be, uh, you know, it's, it is absolutely almost a guarantee that they're going to, we're going to be looking at a similar sort of thing as maybe what Sony has right now with the PS4 and the Vita, where they're so tightly integrated that, um, that this sort of thing where we're seeing unification between the Wii U and the new 3DS, we're going to just see that happen more and more, regardless of if it's one system or two. Or, or as we had said before, and again, Nintendo. Just remember, this is trademark Nintendo Dad's property, the 3DU. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> see, I tried to get together. that out of my head. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna, every four weeks, we're gonna slip that back in there, Jazzy. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. It will be here till the end of time. All right. Cool. Uh, Justin, I am you've got so a, thrilled. Just you've got a. Again, it's been a little bit of a of a quiet news week, but um, do you have a, an awesome uh, idea for a topic here? Why don't you lead us in this? Yeah, so obviously, uh, you know, we've talked about it, that I'll be getting a new 3DS very soon, which I'm excited about. Um, and this new 3DS has the ability to add additional memory. It comes with a standard 4 gig uh, micro SD card. And you can purchase more. So I wanted to throw it to you guys, and I'd love to actually hear also the fans 
responses when they hear this podcast, respond on Facebook, Twitter, whatever you'd like. The question is, do you download games or do you physically purchase games? And which one are you more in the camp for? So previously, really the, the, the Wii U is the first game, first console, or and I guess the Wii, where I purchased some games that I could buy physical discs for. So for example, I got uh, Wind Waker digitally. Um, that's it right now that I can think of. Um, but for the most part, I'm still a brick, brick and mortar, head down, buy my, you know, uh, Smash Brothers um, physical disc copy, put it on my uh, card, you know, put it on my shelf, get the, get the Club Nintendo stuff out of it. But I do still purchase games online, obviously. So I do purchase a couple games for the eShop uh, because you can't purchase them anywhere else. So my question is, as I'm transitioning to a 3DS... Do you guys believe in trying to go all digital, or do you try and still do a bricks and mortar, or do you a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of both? And also, what are your guys' pros and cons? Do you think associated with that? Because I'm sure as people are picking up new 3DSs and buying maybe extended memory cards, what are your thoughts on this, guys? I'd love to hear it. Um, you know, Jesse, maybe we'll start with you. Yeah. Uh, so my 3DS, I have little folders set up separating. You know, these are the game, the Game Boy Color games. These are the Game Boy games. These are blah blah blah. And one of the folders is retail games. And so, in my retail folder is Paper Mario Sticker Star, New Super Mario Brothers Two, Mario Luigi Dream Team, Mir Professor Layton Miracle Mask, <laughs> Ace Attorney Dual Destinies, Animal Crossing. Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright, Professor Layton and the Azuran Legacy, and Mario Golf. And then I have like two other games that didn't even make it into the folder yet, still sitting on my main screen. So yeah, I am. I like my re. I like my digital games. So are you are you a hundred percent digital? If it's for me, yes. Um, okay. If you know the 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 con of that is if I buy a game and my kids want to play it, then I have to give them my device. Okay. So on some game, there's like one or normally their the games they like and the games I like are separate anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But where they do mesh, uh, what I normally end up doing is I buy I buy two. I buy the digital version for me, and then I buy a physical version for them, and then they can pass the card around. And mm -hmm. okay, so what so what made you decide to go? And essentially, in your case, Jesse, for you specifically, not necessarily with the kids. And I think that's a very interesting question or, or point you bring up there, especially if you're dealing with. You know, families that have multiple kids, multiple systems, you know, that, that physical, like, here's a cartridge, go play with it, leave me be, right, or, or go share with your sister. I think that's a really good point. What what was the turning point for you to decide to go 100% digital? Because I lost so many cartridges back in the DS days. Mm. Yeah, okay. I, I remember I had this baggie full of DS games. I had no idea where they are. <laughs> they, they, I think I, the problem is because I, you put them in a baggie. Yeah, I, w I was, I was going to say that too. <laughs> well, I thought it would be a good idea to keep them in one place, and, and apparently not. But yeah, I, I, there's so many games I've lost over the years. Okay. And of course, you know, this is, you know, my kids were four, five, and six back then. You know, now they're 13, 14, and 15. So they don't really lose games like they used to. But, mm. uh, yeah. But but you know each of them have their own system, so I don't want to buy a digital game for them. Like like Pokemon, uh, the X, when X and Y came out, everyone wanted it, so I actually bought four copies, but they oh, were geez. they were all digital, and I installed them on each of their systems. They each got right. one, and I have one I have one from for me as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, and I think I think even that's an interesting interesting point. You're kind of flipping the coin on the other side of that being, you know, I said a couple moments ago, if you've got multiple kids, hey, kids, go share the game. But your point is maybe just download the game on their console, and then, then they right. will never lose it either. Have to lose it, right? So, right. but but in a game like Pokemon, you can't share that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's, there's only one save file. Right. Okay. So it's my for the games like that. It's it's better off di digital doing digital on that anyway. But they have other games that they do share around. Like uh, the yeah. Persona, Persona Q, there are there are three save states on the cart. Plus, you can have three save states on your SD card. So, if everyone plays it, the game passes the cart around, they can l actually never save it on the cart, and they each have their own save state. Oh, that's which, awesome! Which is an, a feature that very few games do. Hmm. Yeah, very cool. Oh, awesome! Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I I kind of going along with that. I mean. In my mind, there are two reasons. If you are really wanting to go full digital, there are two reasons. Well, three 
let's say there are three reasons to go physical over digital at this point. One is because you like the way that the box looks on your shelf, mm -hmm. and you want to have the physical thing, just for mm -hmm. for the sake of having having physical collector stuff. Most um, no. most of the time, if I buy a physical game, the cartridge, the, the box itself hits the trash. Mm -hmm. Oh really? Oh, yeah. oh wow, yeah. I don't think I've because, been because then his game's going to Ziploc baggy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and so that's the first reason. The second reason is, um, you know, what Jesse just talked about with sharing. Oh, <laughs> Ziploc bag right there. Um, and uh, yeah, the second is the sharing thing that Jesse talked about. And the third is um, is one you you really should ask yourself once I'm done with this game, what am I gonna do with it? Is it something I'm gonna want to go back to? Is you know like for me like I I I really do not like Nintendo games. I don't really like to just get rid of them. I have done that enough in the past that I'm like, and and regretted it, that I'm like, I really don't want to get rid of these games. These are games that I'll want to come back to at some point. Um, and so it's really nice to have a digital archive of all of the games. Um, but having said that, there are some games where it's like, yeah, I'm going to try this game out, and then I'm, you know, the worst possible thing is to buy a game, download it on your system, and then and think... Wow, um, I paid full price for this because the eShop, that, that's actually another thing to consider is that sales on the eShop are nowhere near as frequent as sales as, as sales on Amazon or the thrift store or whatever, right? But, or, um, or even if you, you buy a game at like, launch, you buy it and you find out you don't like it. Yeah, like, and it's like, well, well, Watch Dogs on PS4 is exactly what I did. I bought it digitally on the PS4, and no one, I, I hated it. My son hated it. No one plays it. It's still sitting there. We didn't delete yeah. it, but we. And if you would have, but no one will play you, it. If you would have gotten the physical copy, you could have taken that thing down to GameStop when it was still on a high trade-in value. Yeah. And you would have got a pretty decent amount of money back towards another game, and so. You know stuff like that is, uh, but having said that, for me, I'm in a very similar boat as Jesse. Um, I I've been since they started the digital, uh, the di releasing retail games digitally on the 3DS. I've pretty much gone digital only, uh, with very few exceptions. Uh, and you know it's it, like I've got I I figured it out once how much I have like like actual value. I don't know what possessed me to do this, but actually finding out how much it would cost to go back and buy all of the games that are currently like on my 3ds and it is it is definitely like over 300 400 dollars worth of games that are downloaded on there oh wow um just because of all the retail games and all the you know stuff like that so it's but, awesome though because then i'm like oh man i'm kind of feeling like playing some fire emblem right now and just like break it open and and play it and i i almost wish that there was some sort of way that i could go and just trade in my physical copies if there was a way for me to trade in physical copies for digital I would do it in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. So, I, like, like I said, I kind of have some struggles with it, um, and I think the reasons that I'm struggling with it is is a like I want to lean towards download, and I do realize that there are games that are only exclusively found like in the eShop that you can't get a, a cartridge for. Right, same situation we currently currently have in the eShop for the Wii U. Right, though, if I want. If I want Gunvolt or I want Xeno Drifter, I, I have to buy that on the eShop. And I'm fine with that, right? That's just the nature of the beast. Mm -hmm. But when it gets stuff like, hey, I've got a link to the past, uh, and I have a friend who's like, hey, can I borrow that? I, I, I love the fact that currently I can like, go down to my library and be like, yeah, I'm done with it. Here you go. Have at her. And, and it allows for them to, to go have that experience, right? Um, and sharing that experience. Where digitally, I can't share it, right? I can't say... Yeah. I want to assign this, you know? And like, if I had my... If I had Zach Vide, your Nintendo ID... And I got a request of like, I'd like to, you know, lend this to Zach, and I have your Nintendo ID, and it says like, do you want to? And it says yes, and it like transfers off my file to you or or something, right? That you have access to it. Then I feel okay with that, right? The other component of it is it's still um, going down to supporting like whether it's EB Games or Future Shop. I'm going in there, I'm picking up a game, um, you know, the economics behind traveling to the game, buying a game, the customer service, the employment. There's there's a there's a frontline economics there that I that I want to support because digitally, for the most part, you're not seeing any price point differences. Yeah. Right. If I go to if I you know like and this is my channel like this is going to be my you know first world problem February twenty thirteenth when I'm picking up my 3ds. Do I buy a sixty dollar eShop card or do I right there and then also just buy uh, a link to the past because I'm going to get it but am I going to get it digitally or am I going to get it um, 
uh, the cartridge component of it, right? You mean um, Link Between Worlds? Link Between Worlds, yeah, I'm sorry, what did I say? Link, link to the, the past. past. Yeah, Link Between Worlds, sorry, I apologize. Um, you know, like, that's that's kind of the, the challenge part of it. And the other thing that I, they also that I also struggle with is, like, I have kids, right? So, so if my daughter, like, for for one, I do, one of my daughters picks up my three new 3DS, and I'm like, hey, this is pretty awesome, and they're trucking around the house, and all of a sudden they trip, and I see that, that 3DS fly across the air, and all of a sudden yeah. smash into a billion pieces, and, like, my game library is there. I don't have confidence in Nintendo's current ecosystem online cloud, well, not even a cloud, accounting system like I do Apple. Mm-hmm. Right, Apple. It, I know that if my kids destroy it, my phone, I it is better. Password, but it isn't as user done. friendly. Yeah, yeah basically, like, basically the situation you're in right now is is it, they will still allow you to transfer all that stuff to a new system, but uh, it is entirely sort of mediated by their online support or their their phone support or something like that. So they have to do it all on their end. It's not like a like a like a PlayStation, like a Sony or a Microsoft where. Yeah, where where it's just like, oh, we'll just go buy a new one, and log in, and there you go. There's all your stuff. Like, no, mm-hmm. you've got to because they limit a Nintendo Network ID to one Wii U and one 3DS. Yeah. Um. Then, which, by the way, that needs to. There is no reason that that exists. That is like I don't. Well, I'm sure there is, but I don't know what it is. There's no. Yeah. I well, can't think of any reason well, why, <laughs> other than just trying to limit. Well, um, how much games are being shared. Yeah, because in, in the Wii universe, the games are tied to the system. So in the Wii U universe, going through the Nintendo Network ID, it's the games are still tied to the system, but indirectly, because the, the games are tied to the Nintendo Network ID, but then the Nintendo Network ID is tied to the system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, see, and I think, as we were kind of talking about last week with, the, with Club Nintendo going away, with uh, some other, you know, sort of potential system things going on i suspect that we're going to see a i wouldn't be surprised if we see a pretty significant overhaul of not necessarily overhaul but but increase and improvement of their overall like account system in general this Mm -hmm. year Uh, you know i mean like we're still paying if you want to buy you know mario super mario brothers on the 3ds and the wii u virtual console you're paying for the game full price two times right yeah. which is craziness there's no reason that that needs to happen either yeah. so so yeah I, I kind of i have i have mixed uh, mixed approaches to it um but yeah i do i kind of value your guys that's uh, good input um so i'll let you know as as i make that decision and I, it may very much be like the way i approach my wii u right now which is kind of a if i can get a brick some more i'll pick it up and then everything else will do the e-shop for right because i do but at the same time i like the fact that you know, you, you know, as I kind of mentioned before, I'm traveling to Boston this this week here, and what do I have to do? Like, I'm I'm finding my my DS Lite container that has now it's not a Ziploc bag. I'm gonna I'm gonna you know that's a good travel advisory <laughs> tip there. It's not a Ziploc <laughs> bag. It's an actual case that has cartridges, and I had to go around the house and find. Now they're all in one location, but all the games, put them in cartridges, put them in this case, put them together, make sure they're packed together, right? And and they were loaded, right? So that again, first world problems here, people. But like, I had to make sure they were there, right? To make sure what I had. As did opposed you, to, you, did, do they still have those uh, eighteen game cases on Club Nintendo? Uh, I don't know if they do. I don't think I have enough to purchase one. They were what, like four hundred mm-hmm. points or something? Yeah, like that? yeah maybe, maybe so. in February they may restock them and have them at a lower price. I yeah. hope because I do want to get another yeah. one. And I do have one of those eighteen box containers, and it is full. <laughs> and then I also checked my retail count, uh, my digital yeah, retail count on the Wii U. And if you include the Wii Fit U as a retail game, even though I got it for free, I have nine retail games. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. So it's um, you know, and, and I even like the fact that the fa- you know the, the the new 3DS you can put in a, a bigger memory card, right? Mm-hmm. I went, I we all chat, chatted about it online this week, but I purchased from Amazon. I know, I know you did too, Zach, a new micro um, SD card, right? I picked a 32 yeah, gig I one. Yeah, I picked up a 32 gig. That's what I have in yeah. my XL right now. So, and that's the exact same size as you know, 32 gigs exactly what I have in my Wii U right now too. And that seems pretty appropriate for the amount of games I download. So, memory doesn't feel like it's an issue for me. Storage doesn't feel like it's an issue. It's just that more like, you know, it sounds bad, but being a dad and a parent, it's my thought is, kid grabs DS, destroys DS. Crap, that's gonna be a lot of work. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, and I mean, my one last thing for me is. Is that those pre-order bonuses for buying things, uh, you know, physical things? I saw a picture of a Codename Steam poster 
from from GameStop this week that apparently they're going to be giving out, and I'm like, ooh, it's like a classic sort of Abe Lincoln pointing the finger, we want you sort of deal, and I'm like, really? I'm like, oh, dude, that is awesome. I really want that poster. Yeah, <laughs> I, got, I, I got a really sweet uh, Mario Kart one when I got Mario Kart Eight, and it's the blue shell. Oh, okay. And it's and it's 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 it's, it's in those like it's the demotive or the motivation picture format. So it's a black you know black poster. There's a white image or there's a white kind of in the middle of it, blue shell in the front in the center of it, and then the caption underneath is uh, blue shells um, ending and destroying friendship since 1996. <laughs> <laughs> I have That's that awesome. posted up in my uh, cubicle at work. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, for sure, I I definitely think that it's I don't know. It's definitely a, a matter of preference, but um, okay. then even, even with all the retail games I have in my 3ds, which I also have a 32 gig card, I just looked at my open blocks. I have 112,000 open blocks, which is about 14 gig still. So I'm about I've used half of my 32 gig card. Uh, that's pretty substantial. That's great. That's awesome. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, speaking of kind of eShop stuff, which is a really good segue. And actually, actually I'm going to stop here. I noticed in your notes here, Zach, you say you have an. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's something I didn't think of. And this is something that I've been I've I've experienced multiple times uh, with the most rec- recent Pokemon game. Um, good thing I wrote that note down because I would have totally forgot. Um, if you're somebody who actually carries their XL around in their pocket, which First, don't wear skinny jeans. Yeah, don't wear skinny jeans. But even then, um, I have, I, I'm have i the kind of person who I'll play the game a little bit and then I'll close my 3DS and I'll put it in my pocket and then I'll, you know, whatever. Then I get like, next time I'm near a toilet, I will go and play a little bit more, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, but I cannot tell you how many times I have been playing this game and I go to, you know, I'll close the system and whatever and then I'll come back and for whatever reason, I, I have pushed the something while it's been in my pocket it has pushed the card down and of course if you push the card down then it pops it all the way out right Mm. and so if there's a little bit of pressure that pushes the card down it will then pop the game Mm. out of the out of the slot and so i'll open up my 3ds says oh the game card has been removed and i'm like oh great well it's like the equivalent of like taking the disc out i hope you saved yeah exactly i like lost like over an hour's worth of of game uh you know game progress at least once and i'm just like oh you gotta be kidding me and so that's something that you definitely don't have to worry about with the, with digital, um, and I don't know. It's just something the, really weird. Like I kind the, of have to find the, the cartridge location in, in the new 3ds may help fix that. Yeah, and it's not centered. <laughs> yeah, it's literally the currently it's right square on the back, right? And so mm-hmm. hopefully that's not as big of a problem. Although I mean, even then, I carry it in my front pocket, and it looks ridiculous in my pocket. It doesn't matter what pocket I use; it's it's too big, See, and the new one is going to be even bigger. So, pro- problem I usually have is, well, I re- I have the the charging cradle for this thing, so I reach down and I grab it just like this, and oops, I just ejected the card. Yeah, it seems like that. It seems like that that card slot in general is too easy to pop open. There should I be a really lock. Like- yeah, I really like the way that the Vita does it, where it actually has a flap that goes over top of the card once it's in. See, I don't. Uh, I've never bought a Vita card. Everything. I'm 100 percent digital on Vita. So. Oh, are you? Yeah. yeah. No, I've got a couple. I've the, got a those couple cards games, are so small. They're really small. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. But but yeah. So that's just one one more thing to consider is that uh, is that you can pop the you can eject the cartridge if you end up doing pop, that. So popping cartridges, popping cartridges, popping cartridges. Exactly. So we um, kind of, as we're transitioning over to eShop, as a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow the Metroid Prime um, trilogy comes out of the eShop for ten dollars. This is you know off a Nintendo Direct that happened two weeks ago. They talked about releasing Wii games on Wii U for the eShop to purchase ten dollars for the first week, and then it rolls up to twenty. This week, this one's the big one that you guys, we were all excited for this one, and kind of the buzz around the intro web uh, is that everyone's excited for Metro, Metroid Prime Trilogy for $10. Um, are you guys, you know, do you guys already have it? Are you picking it up? What's going on? Uh, oh, I'm playing some, oh, never mind. I can't play music and have you guys hear it if it's from this computer. That's too bad. It sounds pretty cool. It's some Metroid Prime music. You'll have to go nice. back and listen. We should just um, pause, right, pro- pause right now and pretend like we're listening to it. Yeah, listen. That's the best music ever. It totally is, actually. You can't hear it, but it is actually really cool. Um, So I'm going to turn it down. 
<laughs> because it's, <laughs> it's so good that it's distracting. Uh, it's making me excited. I'm really excited for this um, to to go back and play this again. Um, to I mean, it's been. Which ones have you played, Justin? Have you played all three of them? No. So I have only played Corruption, which is uh, which was on the Wii U, or sorry, which was on the Wii. Metroid Prime Three. Yeah, the Corruption, Corruption was a yep. Wii, was a Wii game. The other yeah, two I were only, on GameCube first. I only played Corruption, but let me tell you, I loved that game. Like I thought it was just like it did a really. It, it was such a great job of sucking you into that first person, per, first person first mode. First person, yes. First person, <laughs> rah, rah, rah. first mode person. Where it needed be, wouldn't be. And I thought it did a great job of using both the analog stick on the nunchuck as well as the pointer on the um, on the Wii Mote and, and kind of the actions of like flicking the wrist to kind of get. I thought it did a great job of kind of submerging you and really feeling like in the best way they could that you were Samus. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, totally. I, I, and you know, looking back at like that one versus I played the first one. I played the third one. I never played the second one, which I've heard is the worst of the three. Um, mm, uh, like Star Wars. It, yeah, exactly. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. That's a debate for a different show. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, you just totally threw me off. My game. <laughs> <laughs> Surely you can't be serious, uh, but no, not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically, um, the the first one is very environmental. Like the third one, there is more of a narrative, and there's voiceover, and you know, there's there's some like back and forth there. The first one is very much like you land on this planet, and they don't explain a lot. They do a lot of that sort of scanning, and you get a lot of the story through the scanning of the different objects in your environment. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a lot. There's there's a lot less narrative to it. Like in the in corruption, they had all of those additional hunters that came from Metroid Prime Hunters, right? Like mm-hmm. you've got the ice dude and the girl and whatever, right? So yeah. th- none of that's in there. It's all very much like you're just on this planet and this is what's going on. Um, but I'm I'm really looking forward to playing that. I'm yeah. I'm going to be definitely downloading that right away uh, as soon as I can yeah. tomorrow because that's going to be awesome. Yeah, I'd I'd love to see the the digital download stats for like what what Galaxy Two was at, what Punch Out was at, and then what what Trilogy is at. Because remember, so again, people, if you have not played, or even if you have played, let's say Corruption, like I have, for ten dollars, you are getting three Metroid games, right? Two that were released in GameCube originally, and then third Corruption. So ten dollars for three like full blown epic games with a, an amazing kind of arc and story arc through it. So, I, I mean, this is... Currently, this package on eBay is going for, like, 150 bucks. the actual, like, sealed disc version of this. You can buy it digitally now for 10 bucks. Yeah. Even this for $20, like $10. it's a pretty good deal, right? Like, oh, yeah, this is still a well deal. spent. Yeah, so... Jesse, what about you, you buddy? Are you jumping into this one? Um, reluctantly. You know, it's not a se- okay. it's not a series I've enjoyed, you know... I, I love Metroid, but it's the Prime series in particular. I didn't, I haven't got, I've never gotten into. I've tried multiple times and just can't get into them. Uh, but just be, it's the collector in me is basically saying, you know, I know I already paid fifty dollars. I have the disc, and I know the thing is worth so much money outside. But you know, for ten dollars, I might as well, you know, get my digital copy. Mm-hmm. Well, and here's. Here's the thing too that I think maybe maybe is something that contributes to how much I love this, is that I never I never had a Super Nintendo, uh, I I never had a and Aww. there was never an N six like the first Nintendo console that I had was the N sixty four, and there was no Metroid on N sixty four. So mm-hmm. the first Metroid game that I ever played was Metroid Prime, um, mm-hmm. which is kind of See, kind of crazy that- to think about. But which d- um, does put a little a different spin of nostalgia on you. Just yep. very mm-hmm. similar to, oh, what's your favorite Zelda game? Well, it depends. What was the first one you played? If it was Ocarina, then that. If it was a 2D, then it's linked to the past. What's your mm-hmm. favorite Final Fantasy? W- what was the first one you played? If it was 7, it's that. If it was anything before that, it's 4 or 6. Because yeah. it's, it's it's whatever you started first. is You yeah, latch onto that as your favorite. Yeah. Exactly, and, and, and as far as like, what is what do I have as far as nostalgia for like my ver- like two D platformers, and for me it's like Sonic the Hedgehog two because that's what I had when I was you know that was one of the very first ones that I ever played. So again, similar sort of thing there as yeah. far as as far as nostalgia goes. Not even necessarily as a judgment call for quality, but 
Yeah. Yeah, I think I think this is yeah this is this is a this is a, to me is a is a no brainer for for pinwheel games. And again, if, if you're you know maybe a parent or uh, and your kids are kind of getting into the Wii, you know, there's so many great games or the Wii. There's so many great games on the e shop that you can purchase. You know that that reminisce of like how you used to play. To Zach's point, like you know this is I, they, he didn't have it for the SNES or the NES. You know I did and. And going back and playing those games kind of gives me a nostalgia for them. Now I can share that with my kids, and then also say like, "Hey, let's play this this new arc together, or these new games together as we prepare for you know the latest Zelda or the latest Metroid as well." So uh, I'd encourage you to definitely go back and do that as well. I'm still waiting for actually... Zero Mission to come out. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, seriously, mm-hmm. that's come on. That, that's been I... out in in Europe or at least Japan for almost a year now. It seems. Come on, bring it out. I want it. Yeah, totally. I. I did not pick up that one, but or, or the the Game Boy ones um, or GBA ones, but I'm really tempted to pick up. I think you picked up Fusion, wasn't it, Zach? You have Fusion. I have Fusion on to, the, to the ambassador program. The ambassador program, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Which, by the way, I'm thinking um, this is a little bit off topic, but I would bet you that we may see Game Boy Advance games come to the new 3DS because they were apparently having problems with emulation on the 3DS um, for GBA games. Maybe the added <laughs> hardware capability will give us GBA games on the 3DS. Fingers hmm. crossed, but interesting. Anyway, it's wow. a little bit off topic. But see, I'd, be, so, I'd be happy playing that on the Wii U, but okay, sure. <laughs> so this this actually, so again, Metroid Prime Trilogy on the eShop kind of actually transitions us into our email and fan interactions of the, uh, of the week. So Zach, do we have some music to transition this? Yeah, we do. So, so this week we actually have two questions from our our uh, our fan Luke uh, Lore. I think is how we say that. And the first one is actually a really good tie into the Metroid uh, Prime trilogy statement I made a couple moments ago. He said, um, "What Wii games do you hope will be coming to the virtual console?" So we know that Nintendo announced they were gonna they were gonna release out Galaxy Two, Punch Out, and Prime Trilogy. So we're, we're reaching the Prime Trilogy week. What do you think, what would you love to see Nintendo put out next as a game that was on the Wii onto this Wii U digital eShop download? What do you guys think? Either one of the Zeldas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Crap, you know what? I, I thought about this. We had we had time like ahead to, to look at this and think about this, and it's totally caught me off guard. I'm, I'm thinking... Well, I'm, I'm, well maybe I'll... Maybe I'll Maybe I'll buy you some time. How's that sound? Okay, sounds good. Okay, so I did a couple things. I decided to go do some some research, um, and actually in this research, it was almost as if these like two worlds of our of our shows collided in this one big mega epa uh, epicenter of of things that happened to me. <laughs> I decided to go downstairs to my Wii U and turn on and go and go into the Wii emulator to look for games that I played on my Wii that I could recommend. So I turn it on and it comes up to onto the onto the Wii and it has that nice little dashboard kind of channels, and lo and behold, on my channels that I had completely forgot I had at one point purchased via Club Nintendo coins that I had earned for registering my games, Zelda Majora's Mask was sitting right there. Really? Yeah, I was like, I had totally forgot that at one point this was offered by the eShop on the Wii. I picked it up and it's on my it's on my uh, console. Huh. I have that. I have Super Mario 64, and I have uh, Star Fox 64. Totally forgot, but again, it was a culmination of the Wii transitioning to the Wii U games, Club Nintendo, Majora's Mask, all swirling together. This like epic, epic moment of like, wow, this is here. Huh. Uh, so the games that I would that I would love to see, I'm going to approach this from two different ways. Um, I'm going to have a couple games that I'd actually recommend that that wouldn't be bad to pick up if Nintendo actually put them up there. The first one, actually, that I have here is Nin- is Donkey Kong Barrel Blast. Um, this this I, I I think it'd be great for Nintendo to put up there um, for the Wii uh, Wii U because it's a really fun, easy game for kids to get into. Um, you use it's it's a racing game where you're kind of flying around these barrels and you use the nunchucks. Uh, you kind of shake them like this to go fast or turn right or turn left, and it's a it's a fun game, really easy for kids to jump into. Uh, the other one I actually grabbed is uh, uh, Wario, uh, WarioWare Smooth Moves. This is one of the first games that was released on the Wii. Um, and again, this kind of 
kind of just because it used the Wii controller really well, and I think it's a goofy one for kids to get into. So those are those are a couple from like a kid's approach, a family approach. I think it'd be great for them to, to show up. Um, I would definitely agree um, from from what I would recommend that I've played that I think would be great for Nintendo to put on there. I actually think throwing Metroid Other M on here would mm. not be a bad game for uh, for them as well. I think especially after you're coming off of like the the, the Prime trilogy. Um, you know, I know some people didn't care much for Other M, but I think if you if you again offered it something like ten bucks, then brought up to twenty a couple a week later, I think um, Other M is a really good game. I'd recommend for for people to get into if they get a chance, especially at ten dollars. I'd, I'd buy that again to yeah, get to, just to, to have it digitally. Yeah, it takes just a little bit of a different positioning for, from uh, from the the Corruption series as opposed to first person. It's definitely a, more of a side scrolling. A game that has some really nice aspects. Team Ninja was the one that actually um, that delivered this product, which was a great. Or sorry, was it Retro or Team Ninja? Team Ninja. Team Ninja. Yeah, I thought it was a great collaboration with them um, to do it. So I think it was really cool. I would definitely agree that I would love to see Skyward Sword. If that one came yes. out, I would purchase yes. that one right away. I never got a chance to play it. That's a game I was planning on replaying like during the holiday break, but because mm-hmm. of Hyrule Warriors, the Zelda itch I usually get didn't happen so it didn't that i didn't get a chance to play that one yet so but if they do re-release it i'll play it again okay um and yeah skyward sword and the other one i would recommend that i, I don't really know how this works it was the we wear now jesse do you, do you remember much about we wear and dsi wear it depends on the game but yeah it was essentially, it was essentially like a like a prototype of an e-shop right essentially yeah of, they, of they, they were the, the they were digital only contents but due to the limitations of the hardware in the dsi and the wii they had put strict limitations on what could be released like super meat boy was originally going to be a WiiWare game but they couldn't make it small enough to fit without breaking the game so yeah. they end up put it releasing it everywhere else except for the wii so I picked up um, on WiiWare. Uh, so if they if they actually release this on the console, this would be again part of the, like the virtual console. Essentially, I picked up Mega Man Nine, uh, and and I played that. And it was a throwback to the old eight bit Mega Man series. And it, they had a Mega Man Nine and a Mega Man Ten. I only picked up Nine and played, but it was just such a really good game that reminded me so much of why I loved Mega Man as a kid growing up. Mm-hmm. So. Those those are so my biggest one. What, what do I hope? Because I haven't played and I want to play is Skyward Sword. Cool, Zach. I hope that gave you time. Yeah, totally. I've got a few different ones here that I'm looking at. Uh, the first one that I'm looking at is Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. Mm. Um, I have only played handheld versions of Fire Emblem, and so if they were to release some of the console games uh, for that, I would definitely be interested in seeing which one you know which. Uh, you know, playing those games essentially and, and trying out Fire Emblem on a console, uh, that'd be a pretty cool thing. So that's one. And seeing that uh, come out kind of near when the new Fire Emblem comes out isn't too far of a stretch. Yeah, I, see, I think that'd be pretty reasonable. Um, another one that I didn't play but I heard was pretty good, although it's kind of, you know, a, a very skill heavy game, is Sin and Punishment Star Successor. <laughs> um, I haven't played much of that, but I've heard, I've heard from people, you know, they. I mean, it got a 9.0 on IGN. Just looking at their their sort of list of of top I, of top Wii games, uh, so that's another one from a kid's perspective. Um, I think uh, a very likely one to come out is Kirby Kirby's Epic Yarn. That's a good point. Uh, I think that one's pretty likely to come out. Uh, it's a big Kirby game, so uh, I, I think and that one got a lot of really great reviews. So I think that one's pretty likely as well. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, Skyward Sword for me. Um, or a Kirby game that came out in late 2011 might be a good candidate just because of it being a late Wii game. Many people may have passed over it. Mm-hmm. Return to Dreamland mm-hmm. or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the four-player. It was basically like the Kirby version of New Super Mario Brothers Wii or something like that is kind of the similar sort of take that they did with that, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that that's another another one too. I wouldn't be surprised if they'd release Kirby's Epic Yarn close to the Yoshi's Woolly World. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, just as a sort of, hey, did you like that? Here's some more, or, or something like that. You know, so. Um, yeah. And I know there's some other games, because every, basically the Sista, or the Wii, the Wii games, they, they announce different ones in different, um, different regions, too. So what else? I, I think Sin and Punishment actually is one that is 
and oh. that was announced for a different um uh you know in different regions so i'm just wondering what else was and i think donkey yeah. kong was announced somewhere too yeah donkey kong was announced in europe uh that was that was what they got in um when we got punch out they got donkey kong then now we're talking dkc returns though right we're not dkc talking... returns yeah not tropical freeze okay uh, yeah because that's so. a yeah because we're talking that's about, a Wii U we're game. talking about Wii games oh. yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah, so hopefully, Luke, that gives you some ideas of what we'd like to see. Um, it will be interesting to see. You know, my biggest fear is that Nintendo does these three games, and then just like it falls off the radar, and they do nothing. Yes, because that's right. never happened before. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's my biggest fear. Like, so I I, I like really ar- hope that arcade games and we were. Yeah, mm-hmm. Commodore sixty four games and we were. Yeah. So, so really, you know, I think we'll all be keeping our eyes tuned really nicely to the eShop next Thursday uh, to see what they actually announce, if if anything. So, mm-hmm. yeah, good question. Um, the other question that actually Luke also brought up, and, and again, Luke, thanks for thanks for being being a fan and for contributing to our our uh, podcast. We appreciate it and engaging us in social media through Facebook and Twitter. Jesse's giving it two big thumbs up. Um, his question for the show is: If I if I ran Nintendo, I'd Blank, and, and he said, "What would you do? Perhaps what are, what are the one? What's a, what's one issue that you'd fix or improve upon?" So I think it's a ground, great kind of roundtable discussion. Uh, if you were to run Nintendo, what's one thing that you would fix? Hmm. I would. I think. I think the first thing I would do is I would unify the virtual console system in general and make it entirely. Again, I mean, this is. In general, I guess it's not even really just virtual console, but this is the most glaring example of it, where basically fix the account system. So make it basically the same as Sony and Microsoft, where it's very much tied into what you are, you know, you have your library of games, you have your account, and and you know what you have. And I would even be okay with not having cloud saves at first, but at least get people so when they go and sign up, you know, you basically have, you know, you could go on the website and you would have like your Wii U games, uh, and it's specifically just like Wii U games that are for Wii U only. And then there's the 3DS games with just for the 3DS, and then you would have like a third column that is virtual console games. And it would say, okay, well, here's the NES games, and make that as seamless as possible. There, I mean, if we look at it now, the hardware on the 3DS, there is no reason why the 3DS cannot run Super Nintendo games. There's no reason that I mean, maybe there are hard. Supposedly, there are hardware reasons for all sorts of things. Um, but as far as like, why can't I play my Super Nintendo games on my 3DS? Why can't I play GBA games on my 3DS? Why, you know, all those sorts of things. Why can I not play Game Boy Color games on my TV, uh, on my Wii U? Like all of those sorts of things, I would completely unify it and just have it be the sort of third pillar that is compatible with both the Wii U and the 3DS. Um, and I know that that's something that is that is a lot bigger problem. But if we're talking huge pie in the sky sort of idea, that is the first thing that I would really work towards is getting that virtual console, um, that whole system as good as it can be, and then actually release games that people are asking for more consistently than one or two a week. It seems like they're releasing one on the Wii U and one on the 3DS each week, maybe. Um, and there are a ton of games that people would pay for if they were. Uh, you know, if they were given the opportunity, and they've shown that before, it's just that people right now, I think, are sick of paying for games they've already paid for three times, and so basically go to them and say, "Oh, well, you don't have to pay for them; you already have them. Here, here's a bunch more that you can buy if you really want." Right? So, yeah. Jesse, what about yourself, sir? Uh, this is actually a hard question because, <laughs> you know, I, you know, thinking as a businessman. You know, I, any ideas I come up with also would have to be able to make sense financially. You know, I don't. You know, I don't. While it's easy to come up with an answer that would where I would lose five hundred thousand yen or five five million yen really quick, but uh, but the only thing I can think of off the top of my head is um, at least try to increase the. You know, similar to what Jack said, just increase the output of uh, virtual console games coming out. Yeah, the we're getting, we're getting a slow trickle. It started out as a slow trickle and then it slowed down from there, it's especially on the Wii U. Um, you know, we, we want you know 
you know, get more GBA games out there. Figure out why we can't get N64 games, you know, expand into GameCube. You know, we're already expanding into Wii, and hope I hope that, as we said, we hope that keeps up. So, you know, kind of similar but different from what Zach said. You know, GameCube games. Nice. So releasing that back back catalog essentially. Yeah. Yeah. For for myself, and I and I kind of actually agree with both of you guys. I think you're you're both right on the mark. Um, and actually, mine actually kind of is a bit of a blend of, uh, of both of yours. I, I think a secure Nintendo network ID that allows me to your point, Zach. If I purchase it on the 3DS, I have access to my on three on my Wii U. That cross kind of cross platform access, which I think is really important. Um, I think. I would. I do. I do some really minor tweaks. Actually, originally um, building on already what you guys have created, um, I would potentially look at a. I'm going to say like almost a PlayStation Plus membership, but I call it like Nintendo, you know, Nintendo Plus membership, where for fifty dollars a year or whatever it is, I get an unlimited access to the Nintendo back or back catalog at so, any point. Kind of like a player, so like PlayStation Now. Yeah, like like I can go in there if I if I want to to um, download you know Mario, go ahead. If I want to grab Mario Sunshine, go ahead. Like whatever it is, it's there for you, and you have access to it. Not only to Nintendo's catalog, but also to the Sega catalog they acquired. Everything that's in Nintendo's wheelhouse, I, I would want to acquire that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and maybe yeah, maybe it's a sub- subscription base. I don't know, but I think that that and it kind of again bridges a little bit to your point, Zach, um, Jesse, about just a bigger back catalog at your access. I like the subscription Be- idea. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, people have talked about the idea of you know like a Netflix for virtual console sort of system. Yep. yep. Um, or even a PlayStation Plus, where every month. If you go to the store, then you can say, all right, well, this month, this game and this game are free to download. And as long as you have your membership up to date, then you have access to those games for free. If your subscription ever lapses, then you no you longer have them. access to this yeah. game, right? So, yeah, which, I, is, which is I, fair. I looked into the PlayStation Now service now that it's no longer in beta. You know, in, during beta, each game had its own rental pricing and you'd pay five dollars to play this game for three hours or twenty dollars yeah. to play this game for three months it's really ridiculous why it was priced mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. N- now it's a subscription where you you sign up and you can play anything you want on it but one the game selection is still pretty lousy and uh two i think it's a little too pricey you know it's, it costs more to be a PlayStation Now subscriber for a year than it is a PlayStation Plus subscriber. Yeah, mm-hmm. by it, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, and almost not, almost yeah, double. Uh, I think it's fifty dollars for three for six months. And I feel like as well the um, the technology is not quite there for PlayStation Now. I would much rather Nintendo do a PlayStation Plus mm-hmm. scenario where you're actually getting free games and downloading them to your system. Than the weird streaming thing that they're doing. Um, I agree, and I, I, PlayStation Plus. I still like the subscription idea for Nintendo, but have it. Do, you know, not don't try to mess with the streaming because that's that that isn't going to work. Is, I just uh, don't know, like do, it. have the have the games downloaded, to have the games phone home before you launch them to see if you're still a member or not, and have the game self destruct if you if it lapses. I, I'm, yeah. I'd be perfectly okay with those. Mm-hmm. The the flip the flip side of that is that you need to be able to have some kind of cloud based archetype or architecture that allows for more than my thirty two gig storage, right? So if I, if I if I you know if you could imagine you know, you're selecting five or six games a month, you can burn out the thirty two gigs pretty quickly. I need to have some kind of like Nintendo network secured ID that I can go and be, go up there and be like, oh, I downloaded this six months ago. I can pull it again and access it. Presuming I haven't lapsed my subscription, like yeah, something just right. easy. Yeah, so something similar. That's I mean, there's the same thing on on uh, on Sony or on PlayStation Plus, where every month, regardless of if I want these games or not, I don't even own a PS3 or a PS4. But every month, just because one day I might buy one, I'll go onto Sony's website and and like redeem all of the free games for that month for PlayStation Plus. Right yeah. now, all I have is a Vita. But even that is, you know, the free games that I get from my Vita is enough to, to you know, satisfy that $50 a year. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh, well, I'll just quali- get all these anyway so that if I ever do get one, 
if I ever do get a PS4, I'm going to have a ton of free games just waiting mm. on PS Plus for me, right? Yeah. So yeah, I, I agree mean, with you. Those games are small, small enough. Even if it gets to to the N64 games are 32 meg, so yeah. you'd be able to download them in less than five minutes yeah, uh, if you had to. Um, do you remember how the SD card channel worked on a Wii? Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. so. It, the the <laughs> games wouldn't launch directly from SD card. The games copied from SD into a temporary storage on your uh, in the Wii memory, and it ran it from the Wii as if it was uh, a channel. And then if you end the game and come back tomorrow, that temporary game is still in memory. It launches right away. But if you go back tomorrow and say I want to play this game instead, then the temporary game goes away and a new new temporary game is in place. So I think it, it isn't too. Uh, uh, much of a stretch to say, all right, in this service, guarant blocks off 500 meg at most, maybe even less, to this is temporary storage space that is blocked to be used for this service. Then you can download your five, six, seven games. If you don't like them anymore, you can rotate them out and get new games, and it'll mat should manage. Oh. I want to, there's not enough space for this game. What's the what's the game he hasn't played the longest? Delete it and then re-download yeah. it. And then uh, if yeah. I come back tomorrow, he, if I want that game last game again that was deleted, yes, I have to re-download it. But then you know, out another game that I haven't played in a while. And it, that yeah. should be able to e to be easily managed and take less than five minutes per game to download. Probably yeah. even less. Cool. Yeah, I'd agree with that. The The other flip side of kind of the scenario, uh, the other kind of like add-on to the scenario I'd like as well, is for Nintendo to figure it away, whether it's Wii U or 3DS or whatever, on-screen notification of friends uh, and what they're doing. So, for example, if Zach is playing... Yes. If Zach is playing yeah. Smash Brothers, and I'm, I'm on the, I'm on my either 3DS or I'm on my Wii U, and it says Zach is currently playing Smash Brothers online. Do you want to play Zach right now? And I click, ye and like comes up on my screen. I click yes. Whatever I'm doing, it save states it, and it kicks me right into that game. And whether whether that game's in my in my actual game, like in my drive right now, like the disc is circling, or it knows that I have it based on some kind of cloud computing system, and it just kicks me in nice and easy, and I jump in and. Blow your blow your minds here. It has voice chat where you can be like, "Hey Zach, what's up?" Whoa, hey, let's not get crazy. And it's and it's not it's not <laughs> dependent on the fact that you and I are like best friends or whatever to get you know like it's it just becomes a little had, bit like, more. But if it was digitally it. downloaded, you wouldn't have to worry about discs. Yeah, and that, and that's what I mean. By that, <laughs> like, but but it, but it but it runs and it recognizes it right. So yeah, that, that's yeah, sorry, Luke. You, this is like a long rant of like if we ran Nintendo, what would we do? The biggest answer that I think all three of us are coming around with, uh, Luke, is not the games. It's not really even the system. Services. It's the, it's the services. It's the archetype around the services and how to just make them better. Because I think really, I think this is where Sony and Xbox um, are just eating Nintendo's lunch yep. uh, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, can the, is there any better play? Is there any better games that are issued on game on game consoles? First party exclusives, I would highly doubt it. Nintendo is where you come for 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 Zelda and for Mario and for Donkey Kong and for these, for these games you grew up and love. Uh, and, and they're doing those games right, but unfortunately, it's the structure around these other things that feels very 2002 ish. And that if mm -hmm. Nintendo could fix that, if we were in charge, uh, that's what the Nintendo dads would do to fix things. So, great question. Agreed. Yeah. Um, before we transition to kind of wrapping up for the show, we do we actually you know we talked about fans, we talked about Luke kind of contributing to our show. We love people contributing to it. We actually want to give a big congratulations and a shout out to and I'm going to butcher this name, uh, Jan Garrett jo Jokum. And I'm sorry, I am horrible at names. <laughs> Send your uh, emails to Nintendo Dads yeah, at gmail.com yeah. at Mass and twenty three. Uh, um, <laughs> Who is a Nintendo dad to be, actually? He, he sent us out a tweet recently, I believe on Saturday, Saturday, and he said, Nintendo dads, you're awesome. I'll be a Nintendo dad soon, and I feel a lot better since I listened to your podcast. Well, uh, Jan or, or Yun, however you pronounce it, congratulations on, on being a, a dad to be soon. Um, it, it, is, it is something that has changed all three of our lives, and, and we um, you know, love our families and our children, and uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing experience. And... Uh, we're excited for your little little player number two to enter the world. We we can't wait to see some pictures and and share as well. So congratulations uh, to you, sir. 
Absolutely. Let's get started here with this music as we get ready to leave out. Uh, so, absolutely. So, next week, everybody, first of all, we have a very special guest who is hopefully going to be joining us. Do we want to say who it is? Do we want to do we want to keep it a mystery? I don't know. I think I think it's a pretty it's a pretty it's a pretty good name. You know, we're we're excited. Yeah, absolutely. I say we keep it a secret just okay. in case, but we're definitely going to have somebody exciting for next week. I just don't want to say it and then it, something fall yeah, through and then sure. people be sad and and they send angry tweets. Yeah, for sure. We're, but we're, we are just as an because FYI, that doesn't you know, happen on the internet. Yeah, not the internet. Uh, angry, we, angry tweets don't happen. Yeah, angry tweets. We are really actively act, actively trying to make sure that every month, approximately, we're going to try and bring in a guest, a guest, uh, a guest into our Nintendo Dads podcast, uh, and take kind of that fourth chair. And whether it's an interview or whether it's commentary or just talking about what they're playing, we're really working on bringing in some guests that you guys are going to enjoy, provide some insight to uh, Nintendo, to gaming, to to being a dad, and just kind of um, enjoying what we do as well. So. This guest that we have next week is definitely categorizes all of that. So it's a little bit of a teaser, uh, but definitely tune in next week. Um, Zach, if they're looking to follow us, where can they do that? Yeah, you guys can go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Google+, uh, Twitch. Look at Nintendo Dads on all of those, uh, and we will be there. Uh, and we're somewhere new. Yes, we are. So you can head oh, If you want to call in and leave us a voicemail... Whoa, can, what? Yeah, you that's right, people. Now? You can do that. Uh, the voicemail, our voicemail number is 92925NDADS or 929-256-3237. Uh, give us a call and leave us a message. Or if you want to email us an MP3 file or something like that from your phone, do that too and we'll, and we'll make that work as well. So... And you can send that email to nintendodads at gmail.com. Indeed you can. Also, big thanks to OC Remix for the music for the show throughout the show. Uh, and big thanks to Carter Johnson for providing our amazing artwork. You can find her uh, all of her work at, over at megacarter.tumblr.com. And also, I just want to reemphasize to everybody, we've got a ton of new listeners. If you like what we're doing, head over to iTunes. Uh, and leave us a, a review over there. That helps spread the word, and that really attracts a lot of attention and gets us uh, gets us a lot more listeners. And probably is the biggest help that you can give to the show. You know, so last week, I page of iTunes like new podcasts. We'd love to see us there. Last week, I remember finding that someone did leave a, a good review, and I wanted to write it down so we can talk about it, but I forgot. So maybe we'll well maybe we'll read that next week. Love it. mm Hmm. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Well, we're gonna we're gonna head out here, and thanks for next. Thanks for thanks for next week. Wow. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next <laughs> week. Um, have a good one. Bye bye. <laughs>